Hi everyone, and thanks so much for coming. So I'm going to talk about the etiquette of donor linking. I'm going to walk you through the myths and realities of donor conception and the issues for each party in that. So issues for donor conceived people, for donors and for parents. I'll talk briefly about the VARTA donor linking model and sensible etiquette for connecting. Uh, throughout my talk, I'll be peppering it with beautiful images from the Towards Openness exhibition we held in June last year and which yesterday won the Minister for Health Innovation uh, Award for volunteers. So thank you uh, to the team that helped put that together. So in the past, it was thought that secrecy in donor conception was necessary to protect all parties and that donor conceived people would have no interest and no need to know about their donor and that donors would also have no interest to know about the outcome of their donation and would not be willing to share information. And that parents uh, should not and would not tell their children and would not want to have any contact with the donor. I guess we know now that things are actually quite different from that. And we know now that openness is actually a better approach. And we know now that it's normal and natural and healthy for donor conceived people to want to know more about their donor, though not, it's not compulsory either, but it's natural to have curiosity. And donors are also curious about the people they helped create and often agree to information and contact if they're asked. And that a growing number of parents do tell their children and also want information and contact with their donor. So what are the issues for people? For firstly, for uh, donor conceived people, the majority of adults uh, are unaware that they're donor conceived because their parents haven't told them. So there's a minority who are aware and are seeking information. Naturally, there are implications if they were told later and in an unfortunate way, for instance, in a family argument or when their parents were separating. Many have little or no information about their donor uh, they're very protective of their non-biological parent. They're not looking for uh, a dad or a mum to replace their non-biological parent. They already have them. They're also quite interested in donor siblings and many are worried about not knowing uh, who their donor siblings are and inadvertently having uh, a relationship with them. This is an example of some information that a donor conceived adult may have, and you'll see just how limited it is. So it's natural to want more than the very limited information that's on an early donor profile. This is another example from the exhibition, and this was uh, a feedback from someone who attended. I look for you on the train, I look for you in the crowd, I look for my eyes, I look for my nose, I look for the answers and I look for the beginning and ending of my story. Look for me. People have lots of questions uh, about what their donors like and a real need for medical information. And this is just an example of the sorts of questions that Cathy and I hear on a regular basis of people wanting to know more. Wanting to know about appearance, personality, uh, all sorts of things, and it's only natural to want to know this. So the issues for donor conceived people thinking about making an application uh, is, uh, are we alike? Are we like the donor? <coughs> Who am I related to? Who are the other donor siblings? Why did the donor donate? Will he or she be open to contact? What if they don't like me? What if I don't like them? Where do I fit in? Should I try and find out more? The outcome is un uh, uncertain because uh, for very early records, some of them may be uh, incomplete or destroyed. It's very confusing sometimes to know how to go about it, to whether to contact the clinic or to VARTA. Is this the right time for them? And the impact uh, for those close to them, particularly their non-biological parent. So it's very common to delay searching. Issues for donors, you'll notice there are some uh, similar issues and some very different issues. Uh, most of the donors in the early days didn't have counselling. They often have no expectations, no right to know anything ab about the outcome of their donation. They may never have considered giving information or having contact with their offspring. If there's been a lot of births, uh, that can be quite shocking for them. 
they may or may not have told their partner or their kids, and that's not an easy thing to do. They may also be concerned about inadvertent incest with, uh, for their children and those uh, donor offspring. They can be um, worried about intrusion on their family and they can be worried about claims on their estate, even though that's not well founded. They may also be quite interested and curious and they're often very um, concerned about not wanting to cause any harm to the donor-conceived person or their parents and are very respectful. Donors do have questions too. Uh, they uh, often want to know how many, how old, what gender they are. Are they healthy? Are they happy? Are they loved? Do they actually know they're donor-conceived? What do they look like? Are we alike in any way? What do they know about me, if anything? Why do they want to contact me? What do they want of me? What would they think of me? What if they don't like me? What if I don't like them? Who is the father? Who is the mother? What is my role? Where do I fit in? You'll notice there's some similar and different questions there to the donor conceived people. Now, issues for the parents. Now, firstly, looking at parents from a generation ago who now are parents of adults. They're usually heterosexual families. They too may have had little counselling or support. For them, the donation was a missing ingredient, but they still were infertile. So it didn't solve the pain of their infertility. And so it's remained unresolved and often very painful and very emotional. Not easy to talk about particularly the non-biological parent feels very, very vulnerable about this and often, as a family, have never spoken about it between the couple or to the child. And few others know about it. And they're very worried about any contact that their um, son or daughter might have with the donor. There's a new generation now um, and they're quite different. So there are still some heterosexual families, but there are a lot of uh, one-parent families and lesbian mothers. And this is a whole new generation. So the parents that are coming through now have counselling, they're better informed and prepared, they're more open with friends and family, they're more, there's more acceptance in the community, and uh, we run a Time to Tell seminar, there's a lot more resources and support for them. So their approach is, well, of course I'll tell my child, but how do I do it? Some parents are also interested in contact while their child's still young uh, with the donor and some are also contact in with other families who've used the same donor. And it can be a dilemma of, uh, should I do this now? When's the right time for my child? Uh, should I wait for the child to be asking? So we're seeing new family formations. We're seeing coming out issues at family, at work and school, um, how to tell the teacher, how to tell friends and how to answer the question for uh, one-parent families and lesbian mum families of why don't I have a daddy and who's my daddy? Uh, the good thing is that they always disclose and uh, there's a greater interest in contact with the donor, mainly to thank the donor.